This Resvani tank is a thousand horsepower, street legal, apocalypse ready truck that has some absurd features. It's bulletproof, it's got night vision, it even has electrified door handles. <laughs> but it's got a whole lot more, and today we're gonna look at some of those wild features and the engineering behind them. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this episode of Bumper to Bumper. Just like wanting to keep your booty safe in a freaking tank, I'm also sure you guys want to keep your hair on top of your head. Now two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. Now if you still have hair and you're worried about losing it, prevention is key. Now Keeps treatments really work to help it stay there and the sooner you start using it, the more hair you'll save. You gotta save all this hair. Oh, I love your hair, stay there. We'll see if that works. <laughs> One of the great things about Keeps is you can visit a doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered right to your front door every three months. So you never need to leave your house, which is pretty great right now. So if you're noticing that you're losing your hair, do something about it. You can receive 50% off your first order by going to keeps.com slash B2B or by clicking the link in the description below. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash B2B. Thank you guys so much for supporting the companies that support us here at Donut. We love you. Resvani Motors has been around since 2014, designing and manufacturing custom cars. You may have heard about them when they hit the scene with their Resvani Beast, an aerial atom disguised as a supercar. Well, they have now moved into the truck making game with the world's most sophisticated doomsday truck, the tank. <laughs> Now the tank is a military inspired extreme utility vehicle that, believe it or not, started off as a Jeep Wrangler. And Resvani takes the base Jeep Wrangler, strips it down, and builds it back up to what you see here. But this thing is far from your standard Wrangler. In fact, the frame is the only remaining part left. So let's jump in with the first feature that makes it so different from its Jeep kin, and that's that it's bulletproof. Now, bulletproofing a car is nothing new. Notorious gangster Al Capone had his Cadillac fitted with one inch thick bulletproof glass all the way back in 1928. So what makes this glass different? Well, first is the type of glass. This is glass clad polycarbonate. Now, unlike Al Capone's caddy, which just used really thick standard glass, this glass is a laminate. And laminate is just the science equivalent of a lasagna. You have your multiple layers of glass. Those are the noodles. And then you have your inner layers of various plastic. That's the red sauce. And then you have a final layer of polycarbonate. And that prevents all the shards of glass and plastic from splintering off and hitting you in the face. That is the cheese. Now, regardless of the type of glass, they all work in a similar way. When a bullet hits the glass, the energy spreads out throughout the layers. The layers absorb the energy over a large area, slowing the bullet down to the point where it doesn't have enough energy to penetrate through the entire sheet. Now, there are different classifications of bulletproof glass depending on the mass of the bullet and the velocity that it's traveling. There are nine different ballistic classes to be precise, from level one, which can stop shots from a 22 rifle, to BR-3, which can withstand a 357 handgun blast, all the way up to SG-2, which can take three direct shotgun blasts from a 12 gauge shotgun. Now this tank uses B7 rated glass, the highest rating for a long rifle, which is capable of withstanding a 9.8 gram AK-47 round, 10 meters away at 820 meters a second. Fun fact, Tesla actually uses their own simplified version of bulletproof ratings for their glass on the Cybertruck. It's pretty easy. It's can it withstand the impact sure. of a metal ball yeah. being thrown by a hipster or can't it? Oh my. Cybertruck burn. I freaking want one though. I pre-ordered. They got $100 from me. So can't make fun of them too much. <laughs> but what if someone decides to not shoot at the glass, but at like any other part of the truck? Well, the military edition uses ballistic armor. It's capable of deflecting bomb shrapnel and sniper rifles firing armor-piercing rounds. To do this, the tank adds roughly 4,000 pounds of added protection using steels. But not all steels are the same. The tank uses hardened blast protective steel, and hardened steel uses iron and carbon in various amounts that give it its blast-proof properties. And if that isn't enough protection, 
Resvani uses Kevlar around critical components like the radiator and the fuel tank. And the fuel tank is even self-sealing. You have an inner liner, which is usually vulcanized rubber, which is unaffected by the fuel in the tank. It's called vulcanized because the rubber goes through a process called vulcanization. If you wanna know about that, good, because I'm about to tell you. Now in 1839, this self-taught chemist by the name of Charles Goodyear was messing around with natural rubber, trying to alter its properties so that it would become a more useful material. Like all great scientists, he just made a mistake one day during an experiment. He spilled a rubber sulfur mixture onto a hot stove and instead of turning it into goo, it formed a stronger rubber. He had created vulcanized rubber. Now when you heat up sulfur, the atomic structure breaks apart. And when you add in all the polymer chains of the rubber, it bonds those chains together and they become cross-linked. And when that happens, it improves the rubber's strength and elasticity. And elasticity is just the ability for something to go back to normal shape after it's been stretched or compressed. Now, it's not as easy as just mixing sulfur or natural rubber and then throwing it in the oven. Goodyear spent years optimizing the amounts of each substance, the temperature, and the time. By the way, this is years before Goodyear Tires was formed, but the company is named in honor of him. Fun little fact. Now, the layer outside of this vulcanized rubber is a layer of untreated natural rubber. Natural rubber comes from trees in the form of liquid latex. It's basically white, sticky, tree juice, mm. and we extract it from the tree in a similar process to how we get maple syrup from trees. The rubber gets withdrawn from the tree by making cuts in the bark, and where the sticky rubber then drips down into a bucket. It's called tapping. Now, if a bullet were to somehow get through the Kevlar wrap tank and puncture it, this is where the natural rubber works its magic. When the fuel begins to leak out of that hole, it comes in contact with that second layer of untreated natural rubber. And that rubber swells and it gets sticky and it expands, sealing the hole and stopping the leak. Pretty freaking smart. Speaking of rubber, why don't we talk about these wheels? They have military run flat tires mounted on them. So civilian style run flat tires have a reinforced sidewall, which means if you puncture your tire and it loses air, the sidewall is strong enough that you can still drive on them. The tires stay rigid without any air pressure. But military run flats, on the other hand, they use a hard polymer insert inside the tire, a run flat ring. Now these rings can withstand the weight of an armored vehicle. Remember, this tank weighs 6,500 pounds. So if the tires get shot up, it can keep on rolling, baby. So the tank is bulletproof, it's blast proof, it's bomb proof, but is it EMP proof? Now for all my non-Modern Warfare 2 buffs, EMP stands for Electromagnetic Pulse. Basically an EMP creates surges of voltage and current inside electronics, and that's bad. It causes all the microchips and circuitry to burn out. And considering cars these days are basically just big robot computers, during an EMP strike, it turns your car or truck into an inoperable pile of steel. So what causes EMPs? Well, lightning strikes and nuclear bombs. Now, those aren't the only ways, but the two people worry about the most. And for the builders of this car, they were taking into account an EMP strike from a nuclear bomb. Now, the tank uses the world's first EMP protection for the entire electrical system. It uses radioactively charged gases that help shield the initial strike of electricity in 500 trillionths of a second. To give you an idea how fast that is, Let's go back to 1995 in the closest finish in NASCAR truck racing he history. The fender right in the door of Butch Miller. Here they come out of four, side by side, to the line. I think at the 11th race of the season at Colorado National Speedway, Butch Miller beat out Mike Skinner, two dudes with sweet ass names, by one one thousandth of a second. That's 0.001. So how can we equate that amount of time into a distance? a measurement that's easier for our brains to comprehend. How far behind was a second place truck when it crossed the line 0.001 seconds later? Well, to make the math easy, let's just assume both trucks were going 100 miles an hour when the first truck crossed the line, which is 146 feet per second. Well, in one 1,000th of a second, Butch's truck crossed the line 0.146 feet ahead of Skinner's truck, which is only 1.76 inches. It's like this how much he beat him by. Now let's say Butch won by one 500 trillionths of a second. How close would the two trucks be then? And it turns out he would only win by 0.00000000035 inches or 3.5 times 10 to the minus 10 inches. I'm talking Ant-Man, you know, going down where you need an electron microscope to even see stuff. So I hope that helps. Now you can't call it a tank 
unless it looks like a freaking tank. <laughs> Sharp edges and the larger fenders are by design. One, because you need that space to add in all the extra protective equipment that comes in the tank. And two, because it just looks mean. The front bumper, for example, is a ram bumper. It's designed literally to ram sh it's just a big hunkin' piece of steel. There's also some cameras and special lights in the front of the tank. Now you have your regular headlights, and next to them are blinding lights. And they're meant to blind attackers coming at you from the front. Now there are also a set of strobe lights, and they have one main function. And that's to disorient potential enemies who are prone to seizures. <laughs> oh, that's so up. <laughs> There's also a sensor right next to it, and that's not your typical everyday car sensor because this tank has radar. Now, Rosvani uses FLIR Thermal Night Vision, and the word FLIR is a US military acronym that stands for Forward Looking Infrared Radar, and it detects thermal energy or heat. Side note, these systems work by detecting differences in heat. So if you ever wanna try to trick the radar, just try to match the temperature of your surrounding area. But given the sensitivity of this device, that might be hard to do. They can measure temperatures down to a fraction of a degree Fahrenheit. But one thing they can't detect is what's underwater. So just jump into a pool if you're getting chased by the cops using an infrared system on their helicopter. It's a little Southern pro tip from your bro bro, cousin Jerry. Now the radar on this tank is just one of the James Bond MI6 inspired features that add to this being the craziest apocalyptic vehicle you could ever get your hands on. But it's not the last one. And inside, there are even more gadgets to help save you from the outside world. Now, while the exterior looks very tank-esque, the inside is cush. It retains the interior layout of the Wrangler. The seats are leather wrapped, as well as the door panels, the console, and the instrument cluster, a $7,500 option. And if you take a look up, you can see what $6,000 gets you. That's the Starry Night headliner, like in a Rolls Royce. Because, you know, if you're on lockdown inside your tank, you need to be able to look up at the night sky and not feel claustrophobic. Ugh, I don't like that feeling. <laughs> now, there are a few main things inside here that I wanna talk about, and the first is the panel of switches. The first switch I'm gonna talk about is the electrified door handle switch. Ooh. Now you flip this switch on and a power inverter converts the 12 volt battery voltage into 120 volts of electricity, charging the exterior handles. And if anyone tries to open the door, they get zapped. Now, you might be thinking, that's not a lot of voltage. Well, you'd be right. I mean, a taser gun, for example, has 30,000 to 50,000 volts, but those are powered by small batteries with very little current, and it's the current that can actually kill you. Now, current is the rate of flow of electrical charge. And think of it as the amount of electricity that passes by a point per second. Now, voltage, on the other hand, is the pushing force of that current. If you think of a river with water flowing down it, the slope of that river is the voltage. And the steeper it is, the more pressure it exerts down on the water at the end of the river. Now the current is how much water is flowing along that river per second. Now going back to our current kill saying, a few drops of water running down a very steep river carries far less energy than a big river with a lot of water flowing down only a slightly sloping river. Now imagine you standing under a waterfall under those two rivers. Now you'd be soaked under the one with a larger current and it's current that damages the cells in your body. It only takes something like 50 milliamps of current to pass through your heart and cause cardiac arrest. And a car battery is a great source for delivering a lot of current in short bursts. A starter motors require a lot of current to run and lead acid batteries are good at providing those necessary intense bursts of current. Now, if you look at your car battery, it will usually have a number stamped next to the letters CCA. And CCA stands for cold cranking amps. And that's the number of amps or current a 12 volt battery can deliver at zero degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds while maintaining a voltage of at least 7.2 volts. So while a car battery doesn't have much voltage, it has a lot of current. And this system takes that voltage, it steps it up to 120 volts and takes advantage of all that current and it shocks the out of any unwanted people trying to get into your tank. Okay, next to the electrified door handle switch is another James Bond-esque feature. You get a smoke screen and yes, it does exactly what you expect. 
Using a smoke generator, which I didn't even know that was a thing, the machine heats a volatile material, typically some sort of oil, hot enough to evaporate it. It then mixes that oil vapor with the outside air, which is cooler, and it condenses, turning into smoke. It's then shot out the back of the tank, and it shields you from any enemy fire that might be behind you. Pretty cool. Now next to that, we have the deadbolt switch. Turn that on and four magnetic deadbolts lock you into place. You got an intercom system here, which is pretty cool. A variety of sirens to play. And my favorite feature, road tax. Say you've driven down to Mexico to bust your wife out of a drug lord's underground jail cell. You did the impossible. You infiltrated their secure facility and you got her out and into the safety of your Resvani tank. The drug lord and his lackeys, they aren't gonna give up. So they start chasing you and they're firing all their AK-47 rounds. Bam, bam, bam. And you activate your smoke screen to get some distance between you and them as you navigate the narrow roads of Los Cabos. But they're relentless and they want your wife and they don't care what the cost is. And you're starting to think to yourself, was this worth it? You told her not to go to that bachelorette party. You said, remember when I asked, isn't that place dangerous? And you said, no, not at all. As long as you stay on the resort. And then remember when I said, well, are you planning on staying at the resort? And you said, I think I have a few day trips planned. And then remember when I said, well, then I guess it's not really safe then, is it? And you told me to stop being such a worry wart. You remember that, Teresa? You remember that, <laughs> Teresa? Bullets are still flying and Teresa starts in with the waterworks. You've absolutely had it. You're ready to get back home and watch episode seven of Tiger King. Okay, you hit the tax switch and a hundred three inch long sharp as metal tax get dropped out the back and those drug bozos behind you run them over. Three hours later, you're back in LA on the couch and Teresa's on the phone with Betsy talking about their trip to Cape Town, South Africa and you're watching Joe Exotic be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, you have all of these cool gadgets that wouldn't really matter unless you had an engine with enough power to propel this 6,500 pound truck down the road. And doing the job of that is the 1,000 horsepower Dodge Demon engine. A 6.2 liter supercharged V8 making a 1,000 horsepower and 870 pounds of torque. Now, Resvani has a custom tune and a smaller supercharger pulley to bump it up from the standard 840 horsepower Demon motor. Now, last week, we talked about Speedcore getting more power out of the Demon engine by going twin turbos, ditching the factory supercharger. Well, the Resvani team chose to keep that supercharger and massage more power out of it. And with a supercharger, one of the ways to increase power is to increase the amount of boost. And when I say boost, I really mean air mass, not air pressure. So you can increase power by increasing the total amount of air going into the engine. And more air into the engine means we can put more fuel into the engine, and if we use our very favorite donut equation of more air plus more fuel, we get more power. And one of the simplest ways to do that with a supercharger is to increase the speed of that supercharger. And you can do that by swapping out the lower pulley for a larger one or the upper pulley for a smaller one. Either one of these methods causes the supercharger to spin faster, which then increases the amount of air the supercharger pulls in. Now that you have more air, you can tune your fuel system to increase the amount of fuel, and now you have more horsepower. And in the case of the tank, you get 160 more horsepower. The Resvani tank is an insane, apocalypse-ready truck that's close to half a million dollars. If you have one of these, I'm guessing you're working in a profession where you need this level of protection. I mean, Chris Brown has one, that makes sense. <laughs> we can't end on that. <laughs> Thanks guys for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. We got a bunch of new shows that are coming out. We got James, he's doing a new list show. We got Money Pit where Zach's going through the ins and outs of uh, a Miata. Uh, we're doing donut seven days a week. So every day you get your dose of donut. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at Jeremiah Burton. Follow us on donut at Donut Media. Go get you a Boost Creep shirt, donutmedia.com. Bye for now. Teresa, get in the car. Just get in. Get in. He's rescuing his wife from Cabo. Oh, you're so rude. <laughs>